Let's clarify it here. This is the pulse length, and these are the two objects. And this is the separation between the two objects. And this is the pulse that I sent. If this separation is greater than the half pulse length, okay. What about the one between this and the one I sent? Okay. What if this one? Greater than half. Pulse length means your pulse length is one millimeter. If mine is greater than half, then one millimeter greater than half means I am greater than one millimeter. In this case, I can see the two objects. Why can you see them? Because I have the first one, it has returned from the first one, then the second pulse comes and moves. Let's assume the distance is one millimeter. So how much is the distance? The distance is greater than half pulse length. So what is your pulse length? One millimeter means it will travel one millimeter, hit the second interface, and then return. It will go back to the transducer. So now there is space, right? Because it traveled one millimeter, which is its length, and returned. So there was clear separation between them. The second pulse from the first one I sent went to the first interface and returned. There is no problem with that. Now, the pulse that passed from the first interface, which is one, will travel until it reaches the second interface. If this distance is short, less than... In the case of a pulse length or less, what happens to my wave or the pulse itself? It won't have time to travel. It will just enter the second interface. For example, if it is 0 0.25 millimeters, it means it will travel as if it is spreading, moving 0 0.25 millimeters, and then indeed returning 0 0.25 millimeters, and it will catch up with the first pulse. This will cause interference between them. And I won't be able to see the incoming signals clearly, just like what happened here. The distance is slightly short, and thus the pulse, even though my pulse length is large, is still smaller than half pulse length. This means it will travel and return, starting to catch up with the reflected pulse that has already come from the first object, causing interference, and I won't be able to distinguish between them. However, in the case where the distance is large, there is no problem. The reflected pulse that came from the first interference will return. For him, the distance is not a problem. He will read it directly at different times so he can resolve it. That's why he told you this is called axial resolution. The axial resolution depends on the frequency. If your frequency is high, it means a short pulse length, which allows you to discriminate between the distances between the two objects when there is very small separation between them. Therefore, I told you that the space between them should approximately equal the... So, what does it mean? I mean, this could be a question. We understood the story. What does it mean? Why can't it be greater than this? Why? Because in simple terms, I will go a certain distance of 0 0.5 meters. For example, if I go back 0 0.5 meters, this is all considered what? It is considered that if I have a pulse length of one millimeter, this is my limits. This is my limits because I can go 0 0.5 and return 0 0.5. In this case, there is separation. But if it is closer than that, if the distance is less than 0 0.5 meters, in this case, we will go to 0 0.3 and return to 0 0.3. But the pulse length is larger, which is one millimeter, so there will be a part that will follow the reflection of the wave that came from the first interface. Is this clear? Okay, I'm fine, so I won't argue, thank God. So here, the Blith lens or the green resolution is very important in separation. So what is this green resolution based on? It's based on frequency. That's why high frequency gives you a short or short special Blith lens and provides you with the highest beautiful resolution. Okay, but I have a problem with high frequency. 
every time I go deeper, what happens? Does attenuation occur or not? In this case, I will be able to image the organs I have at a higher depth. No, it means there will be a limitation in depth. So here you have two problems, resolution and depth. If you want to achieve high depth, you will sacrifice resolution. If you say, no, I want high resolution, then you will sacrifice depth. The things at high depth won't work. That's why the idea of focusing came up. What is focusing? It says, now I There are other types of resolution that we haven't discussed, but I took this episode to talk about frequency and its role. In order to achieve the desired outcome, it is essential that the external beam is precisely focused and aligned. This is because there are specific elements and factors that require careful consideration and attention. By ensuring that the beam is concentrated accurately, we can address these particular aspects effectively and achieve the intended results without any issues. What is the topic of beam focusing? I have a transducer, which consists of what? I mentioned that I don't have just one crystal. Rather, I have a set of elements, each representing a piezoelectric material or crystal. This can reach up to 512 crystals or 512 elements. So if today I make all these elements, today I make, are there 512 elements? Well, if I made all the elements today, the first element activates then the second element activates and the elements are aligned, meaning I made the activation process of the elements. Or what I call the firing of the element happen gradually. Therefore, I have reached how my beam is currently functioning, for example. This is the port. This port and the crystal port or 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 the crystal port. Interference is the overlap we see in waves, and there is something called the wave front that I mentioned last time, which is the focal area, or my focal plane, that lies between the near field and the far field, where we achieve high resolution. So I wanted to focus this beam. This focusing will enhance the special resolution that exists. So what do I do to arrange my elements like this? I won't do them at the same time. Instead, what I will do is focus on these. First, perform the activation. Then move on to the next step, and then to the next, and then to the next. So what did I do? I created a time delay between the activation of the outermost elements and the innermost elements until you reach the center. But why did you do this? You did it to achieve focusing. What does focusing mean? It means you want to create the highest interference between the beam or the ultrasound signal at a specific point to give you high resolution. So how did you also create this time delay? If you come today and take a look, you will see a circle. Do you see this circle that I made? It's as if the piezoelectric material 
of this transducer surface is tangent to this circuit. So when you start sending electrical pulses here and 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 here, the center present in this area is always right there. What does tangent mean? It means that if we say the distance between it and the center point is less than the distance between the outermost elements and the center point, right? Or the distance between the center uh, and the innermost elements present and the center and the focal point is considered less than the distance between the outermost elements and the focal point because this is a tangent. Why? Because there is a distance here. This distance. This pulse will move outside your diameter. Therefore, it creates a time delay, meaning a delay in the existing problem. What exactly does it mean? What is the activation of the one that exists? The activation means sending the electrical pulse to the outermost elements earlier, which compensates for the distance difference between it and the element located in the center. So when they all gather, they converge at the center point, at the focal point, giving you the highest interference, the highest focal point, and the highest resolution. The concept of focusing or electronic focusing is that you fire the outermost elements earlier than the innermost elements, which are the internal ones. You take a group that works on this, and this group creates a certain shape. So, what does this difference calculate? In simple terms, I have a distance that can be calculated simply as if taking a circle, knowing the differences between each element and the surface of that circle. You have a known speed, so you start calculating the time from the formula that speed equals distance over time, which gives you the time. This time is the guide time that will be used. So this layout works in this way. It claims to give you a focal point or interference here in this form. There is another type of layout where the transducer itself is curved in this way. As if you have created the circuit I was talking about earlier. A curvature or using a lens layout. It brings closer or gathers everything at a single distance or at a single point at the same time. This enhances the interference giving you a high focal point, which is referred to as using the focusing length or the curved source. However, what I was discussing earlier was electronic focusing. Electronic focusing will enhance your focus. The area of the near field that we mentioned discussing last time is the conversion area, where I have a transducer. The shape looks like this. I have the near field area, which is converging which is the area of interferences. I have this surface and the interface between the far field and near field, which is the focal plane for me. I also have the focal zone area. Why this area? Do you want to enter? You have done focusing, so what happens? The lines would have moved in a straight line like this if you weren't focusing. The beam width itself would remain the same. There wouldn't be any variation, and you wouldn't have the focal point that exists. If there is divergence, it would look like this. So, what do you want to do? You want to create above the point, and you want to reduce the distances between these lines. This will enhance something called lateral resolution, which depends on beam width. The smaller the distances between the data points of the lines, the better you can discriminate between two objects that are next to each other, not behind each other. When we talk about axial resolution, 
that relates to frequency. However, the beam width, which refers to the density of the lines and the spaces between them, means that the smaller the spaces, the better you can discriminate between two objects next to each other. In this case, I call this lateral resolution, and the factor affecting it is your beam width. The smaller the beam width, the greater the line density, which increases the resolution. Now this width, which is the area of the focal point, depends on the radius of the transducer and the frequency. Increasing the frequency reduces the diameter, which has an inverse proportional relationship. The focal point, which is the point in the center, has the highest ultrasound intensity and the highest resolution. The story we were actually indeed currently talking about is that I am indeed taking, for example, in the first group from one to five, the ones inside should first work on the outer ones, then gradually reduce until reaching those in the middle. After that, you leave the first one and work on the second group and so on. This way, for each group you take, you create a point as if you are working with a set of points, not a single point. Each group gives you a point. So the lens of these points is your focal point, which has the highest intensity and the highest resolution. Is this the shape of the circular suction that I will talk about or the circular one that I will talk about? What will you do? You will give it the prison of Al-Badr, and then you will give it the prison of Al-Badr, and then you will give it the prison of Al-Badr, and then you will give it the prison of Al-Badr, and then you will give it the prison of Al-Badr, and then you will give it the prison of Al-Badr, and then you will give it the prison of Al-Badr, and then you will give it the prison of Al-Badr, and then you will give it the prison of Al-Badr, and then you will... This is a return to the same element where it is received. So it is called something known as reception focusing. What? is reception focusing. The signal that is returned, when the signal comes back, it returns all at the same timing. What does it do? After I return to the element, it knows the time after the signal, the time after it starts to create something called an electronic delay time circuit. This delay is the same that occurs while I am processing the signal. The signal that comes to it is supposed to arrive earlier. For example, it comes at a different time than what is at the center. This electronic circuit, E, adjusts the timing. For instance, it is supposed to arrive here at this point and here at this point. So now you have the signal coming to the center arriving early. The signal coming to the center is arriving early for you. So it creates an electronic circuit called the electronic delay time circuit to adjust the timing of the existing signal. It sends everything to the processor, and the processor processes it at the same timing, or at the same time, it is coming from the same point. Now, when I think and say that the topic of focusing is very important, and this, he explained the topic of resolution, explaining in detail that you should do something called multifocal. What does multifocal mean? In simple terms, it essentially means that instead of having just one focal point, you increase the number of focal points. In this context, your resolution significantly increases over a larger path length. Instead of having just one point in one location, you want to increase or establish and create many focuses on the focal zone. This allows you to thoroughly scan more depth with high resolution. The multifocal points you created give you the ability to image more depth or higher depth in the patient with the highest resolution, with precision. So, how did you successfully achieve this multifocal focusing?
as a transducer, I can control who to activate in the elements and who not to. If I work on a specific group of elements in the center, it will give me a focal zone here. If I work on a group with a larger diameter or for a longer time, it will give me another focal zone and a larger diameter will give me a third focal zone and so on. In this case, you are determining who to activate and the groups you will work on. Activating them in the same way we will discuss shortly will give you a focal zone here and if you want to work on this group, it will give you a focal zone here. If you work on this group, it will give you a focal zone afterward. Thus, through activation of the different elements and the different widths available on the transducer, you can create multifocal zones and enhance the resolution you have. However, keep in mind that this will come at the expense of frame time. When we talked about this, at that time, every focal point will take time to return to you, so you are essentially increasing your frame time which is the time it takes to form the frame we discussed. Having more focal points reduces the number of frames that can appear in one second. Why? Because you now have different focal points and each one will create a reflection, which means there will be a slight increase in the time required for receiving, processing, and forming the image. Of course, you might not notice this difference during the imaging process, but it occurs with the use of multifocal zone focusing. We are back. You will find that most transducers today use multiple focal zones because if you work with only one focal zone, you will have a signal that does not appear as it should. This technology exists according to the specifications and it is widely recognized that in the field of ultrasound technology, everyone prefers to work with multiple focal zoning as a standard practice in modern applications. I have not worked with ultrasound, God willing, but it might help me in this matter. In the industry, advancements in this area have been significant over the years and continue to evolve with new innovations emerging regularly. I mean, oh, oh, oh. Yes, Dr. Hani. It becomes significantly heavier, as we previously discussed, because it makes the frame processing take a considerably longer time to complete. But let us now discuss in detail the various aspects of the resolution level. It's better in terms of processing time because it allows you to have the utmost highest resolution possible or the best resolution in E long depth available to you that can be achieved. This goes back to the hardware components themselves, whether the transducers as hardware can support this technology or not. For example, when using a laptop or something similar for programming such as coding and other related tasks, you need high specifications in order to ensure optimal performance and efficiency in your work and projects. Similarly, it's the same idea with phones. When considering phones, one must ask, is the hardware truly equivalent to this technology? Is the hardware truly up to par with the demands of modern technology? It might give you the option, it may offer the capability, but when you actually use it. The real question is, upon actual usage, will it be fast or slow? Will it perform swiftly or lag behind? From my perspective, choosing the specifications is crucial and you should look at them carefully. From my viewpoint, selecting the right specifications is of utmost importance and one should thoroughly examine them. The frame rate is important. How many frames per second does it provide? The frame rate, which indicates how many frames per second the device can deliver, is a critical factor. It's not just about the highest frequency or lowest frequency or multiple focal zones. It's not merely about achieving the highest or lowest frequency or having multiple focal zones. It's about how many frames it can handle with the focal zone. It's about the device's capability to manage numerous frames within the focal zone. This should be mentioned in the purchasing sheet for the machine. This information should be clearly stated in the purchasing documentation for the machine.
There are types of transducers, as you are aware. There is the transducer that I have been working on, which is the linear array transducer. There is the first transducer that you know, and I have worked with it. There is the linear, and then there is the convex transducer, which is a different shape. I don't want to find you a better picture. The linear array gives you a rectangular field of view like this. And the convex provides a field of view like this, which is like seeing something in a fan beam. If you want a certain depth with a larger field of view, you should use the convex, especially in cases of the abdomen. There is also the sector, known as the phased array, where your window is small, while your field of view is large. This is particularly useful in cardiac cases or in echocardiography when you want to image between the ribs. This helps because you don't want high attenuation from the bone due to the interaction of the ultrasound with the bone, which causes high attenuation of the ultrasound, so you won't get a good image. Therefore, you use the sector or a transvaginal approach 